we're proud of our school already, but we want it to be better. We want to raise the bar so that our school is like the best it yeah. can be. So I think for the next week or so, I think I want you guys to look at the displays and then when we come back to the next beating, I want a bit of feedback on what we can change and what we can keep the same, but kind of tweak a bit and make it a bit better. But, Student yeah, voice is a high priority at this inner city school in London. Being a good citizen, it's just, it's just being, being civil, just being pleasant to everyone. We certainly feel in this school that citizenship is at the root of everything we do. Since we've come into the new building, we've realised the students really have a real sense of ownership. Pupils are encouraged to be thoughtful citizens by having a strong voice of their own, and the senior staff see it as one step beyond other important activities outside the classroom, such as school trips, fundraising and community involvement. Citizenship is one of the things that we make sure is being like portrayed. It's everywhere. You know what citizenship is. We are a community and actually if we're going to work effectively, we all work together. I don't see that we could go backwards on this. I think it is just a question of moving forwards. Haverstock School in North London. It's an inner city comprehensive that's on the up and they're proud of their attitude to citizenship across the year groups. Over 50% have a background of refugee or asylum seeker status. 58% qualify for free school meals. Obviously we're a very multi-ethnic school and one of the most important things in the school is to make sure that we reduce any kind of tension that might exist between different groups. In terms of where the school are geographically, it is fantastic for students because it lends itself to real life examples. Over 30% speak English as an additional language and some 54 languages are spoken around the school. In a community like this, a proactive approach to citizenship is crucial. Students directly involved in making schools better, promoting rights and responsibilities, uniform, rules, playground and general facilities. Let's go to the uniform quickly. Student councils are clearly nothing new in schools, but here at Haverstock, they believe their council has had a significant impact on the lives of students. Our new uniform, which we've got this year, which the school council voted for, I think that's good that we got this in, because otherwise we would have been using the year 7 and year 8 uniform, which I think no one really likes. <laughs> I'm glad we got rid of that one. Yeah. You know, like, we're picking options this year, yeah. so it's sort of like it's... Now, because we're getting older, we're allowed to decide what we want to do, and this makes us like, just more yeah, responsible. more responsible. Yeah. 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 I liked the uniform when I was in year seven because my brother had this uniform, and I thought I don't really like it. But then as I started le like realizing that I have to like pick choices and do this, then I thought it looks much better because it looks smarter. Yeah. So yeah. Using their voice to bring about a change of uniform at the school was seen as a great achievement for the council as it was to influence so many people's daily lives and make the Year 9s feel like respected citizens of the school. It all started in a school council meeting where we thought, we looked at the Year 10 uniform and we thought, oh, that looks smart, we want to have it. So then we designated jobs for people that, to get a petition. Some people would get a petition, some people would write a letter to Mr Dowd. We wrote the letter to Mr Dowd and he accepted it. And at the beginning of year nine, we sort of got the new uniform. It looks better and uh, I think it's just as comfortable as this one. And I think it, it makes you look more like you're wearing a school uniform. This is a bit, doesn't really look like a school uniform much. I just think it's a bit plain and a bit dull and it doesn't really look as nice as the N9 uniform. It made us feel more mature. We were at a higher stage in the school and now we're beginning to pick our options and get to GCSE stages. This made us feel more mature, more responsible and more independent. Being able to get this new uniform is like a small step for us because now we can, in the future, we'll be able to change more things which will help our voice being, be, to be heard more. There's a sense of pride 
within the students that they manage to take something from just an idea to persuade decision makers in school that this was a really good idea. To see them all wearing the uniform so proudly, um, I, think, I think gives them a sense of that belonging to have a stock school because they wouldn't ask for uniform if they didn't feel that they were really true have a stock citizens. That was really good, guys. As active members of the Haverstock School community, pupils also take part in the interview process for new posts on the senior staff. Where did you previously come from for applying to Haverstock School? You just witnessed a fight and the ringleader has been sent to your office. How will you deal with the situation? What's your home life like? A deputy head interview is obviously quite arduous, but um, to have the student panel in it is quite actually refreshing, really. The thing about the student panel is there's just no way that you can prepare because students are not working to the same kind of sort of protocols and agenda that obviously, you know, the head teacher and the governors and all of those kind of people are. And so the questions, you know that there can be some really, really difficult ones that you, you won't have thought about in advance. We had questions like, oh, the obvious, why do you want to work at have a stock? But we also were keen to know where they've come from and how they keep a good work-life balance. Kind of not just knowing like a type of teacher they are, but who they are as a person as opposed to just a role. Why do you want to work at have a stock school? The other question they asked, which was obviously a very sensible question, is why? Why have a stock? Why do you want to join our school community? Um, which I think, again, is a very sensible question and a really difficult one to answer sincerely and make it, make it come across in a way that actually students think that, that, you know, that you are being sincere and that you're not just saying something because you want the job. How do you keep a good work-life balance? And just for fun, what full team do you support? People around the table are going to support probably Arsenal being that's the sort of closest Premiership club. So then obviously my answer would be a little bit um, being a Liverpool supporter. Obviously I think that might go against me in an interview process. So I'd try to put a bit of humour in really just to ensure that I didn't get put off just by the team I supported. Okay, so rights respecting school award. This is a award, has everyone got one, yeah? Mm. Okay. This is an award that our school is hopefully going to be going for, which Miss Marsdott, the head of citizenship, has kind of organised and put together. So if you've got any other questions other than these, you can ask her, but um, what is it? Well, the Rice Respecting School Award um, gets me very excited as a citizenship um, or as, as head of department for a couple of reasons. Um, this is an award initiated by the United Nations. And I think it's a perfect award for citizenship rich schools because it's a real opportunity for schools to show off how well they are doing, not just from the citizenship side, but also as a school that is part of a community where there are ultimately people coming every single day and how they engage with each other, how do they engage with their school environment. So right now we're looking at advertisement, how we're going to get this award, but how are we going to get it, seriously? What what right? How do we need to show these rights? Are we showing it in our behaviour when they come around? Or are we showing it in our displays? What are we doing? Well, we can go around telling people what's going to happen and stuff. Uh, and what the awards about? Yeah. yeah. And if they know what rights they have. Yeah. Maybe we could have like an intertutor group discussion before all the lessons start, so we could like discuss what the awards are for, to explain to our classrooms what's going to happen and what will be happening in the future. Sometimes, without anything being said verbally, you will know as an observer whether the school is a rights-respecting school. And that would be the way in which students, for example, attend school, how they attend school on time, how they engage with each other as they walk along the corridors, how when they walk past their teachers say, good morning, how are you, or hold open doors. As part of the Haverstock application for the Rights Respecting School Award, we've decided to really take it a step further and look at our behaviour for learning policy. And that includes, for example, looking at our current classroom rules, corridor rules and ways in which we communicate to the students the expectations um, for a productive learning environment. 
I've always had my own theory on rights and responsibilities. Um, I've always thought that one person's right is another person's responsibility and your own responsibilities are other people's rights. Ideally, it might later on a couple of months look like this. Teacher has a right to be respected. Students have a responsibility to listen. So that could be one example in how that might change into more accessible language or language that is consistent and agreed to by staff and students. Basically, the rights are we come to school and it's our choice if we want to learn or if we don't want to learn because it's our responsibility to learn. The rights and responsibilities you have as a citizen that you can apply anywhere, like to school or work or just everyday life. Well, I have the right to walk down the street and not be yelled at and just hit for no reason. But it's someone else's responsibility not to yell at and hit me while I'm walking down the street. Will the defendant please stand? Are you Alex Myers? Yeah. You are charged with Section 24 of the Misuse of Drug Act. How do you plead? Not guilty. Krishar has been working closely on preparations for the National Mock Bar Trial Competition for some time, in close collaboration with the Citizenship Foundation. What happens in the competition is absolutely fantastic. Students are given a case about two, three months um, before the local heats. They then take on the role of prosecutors, defenders, witnesses, and of course the jury and a judge. For what reason did you attempt to search the defendant? My two-year Anastasia Hudson started barking at the student and started pulling at his bag, <coughs> which indicated to me that he had found drugs. Can I just in interrupt just for a second? Um, just a reminder that I know you're getting into the role and you're trying to take on, on the role of the police officer, the prosecution lawyer, and up to this point, fantastic. However, the jury is hearing this for the first time, so if we can just slow it down slightly. <coughs> so let the jury first hear the question, take the question in, and then respond. The cases are real cases, and of course the names um, are changed. But what is fantastic about the competition is not only that the students learn about the justice system, but the Citizenship Foundation really supports the students in the preparation. It is my job as a lawyer and an expert to prove beyond reasonable doubt that my client, Alex Myers, is innocent, and it is your job as members of the jury to weigh the evidence and see that justice is served. Therefore, if you have any doubt whatsoever that the defendant, Alex Myers, intended to supply drugs, then you must see that Alex Myers is not guilty. The students uh, were given the case a few months ago, and what they have been doing through peer support and through local support from the local barrister is prepare the prosecution as well as the defence for the same case. Jury have reached a verdict. Yes, we have reached a verdict. In the case of Alex Miles, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty. The jury have reached a guilty verdict. We will return to court for sentencing in two days. This is a fantastic example of real citizenship in action because it's those indirect skills that students learn, but also you might in the future have a next prosecution or defence lawyer. So you have knowledge and understanding, you have action, and students going away saying, you know what, I was part of something really positive, and I might just consider a career in law. <laughs>